Now we go to uh, Republicans. Uh, they've got a great new idea on how to get people to vote against Democrats. You ready for this? It's a revolutionary new idea. Fear-mongering. Really? Wow! <laughs> Way to come up with a new strategy, Demo uh, Republicans! Right, see, see the logic here, what they're doing, they're ex again, they're exploiting a horror and a tragedy for their insane political agenda. Uh, we had a shooting in Washington where a father killed five of his children, four daughters and a son. The shooter in Binghamton, New York, killed 13. Remember we had the Alabama shooting, 10 people dead in that case, and then the guy shot himself. 955 people dying here in the United States. All these people dead, and then a couple of weeks earlier, North Carolina, we had a nursing home shooting, eight people killed there. Just for a second, pause and think about if there were 30 different shootings the size of Virginia Tech on a single day, and then it happened over and over and over every single day. Uh, I killed him with a shotgun. Uh, all youngsters uh, ages 7 to 16. Now imagine if in the last three years, 232 professors had been assassinated in the United States of America. <laughs> And this gun violence is absolutely positively out of control. He said, wait a minute, that seems a little weird because crime is down all over the country and it's not something that is really being talked about. And if you do any polls of what people are concerned about, crime doesn't even make the list on most polls. So why take an obscure topic like that and emphasize it? Again, they're exploiting a horror and a tragedy for their insane political agenda. What will it take? for the NRA and gun rights advocates to say, hey, you know what, maybe this is getting a bit out of hand. If these five shootings didn't do it, w would seven do it? Would nine do it? Would 13, 15, 17? What if we had 28 shootings in a week? Let's just put this in perspective for a second. Year 2001, 3,000 Americans died from terrorism. Horrible tragedy. We've changed everything about our country in response to it. And they're exploiting a horror and a tragedy. Over and over and over. <laughs> and they're exploiting a horror and a tragedy. Now, I, I love it because of the absurd hypothetical. Now, let's watch it. Afterwards, I'm going to break it down for you. Put that aside for a second. Let's talk about this scenario, right? He comes in with his weapon, he's going to kill people, and the right-wingers say, oh, this would be the great time to have a gun, right? So somebody else draws a gun against him. Third guy comes in with a gun, professor or student, doesn't know which one started shooting, starts shooting at both. Fourth guy comes in with a gun, doesn't know which of the three started shooting, starts shooting at all of them. So your college classroom winds up looking like the end scene in Reservoir Dogs, basically. Exactly. So what kind of hypothetical is this? All right, then I could do this hypothetical. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remake the movie Animal House, but in a, in a world where college students can have guns. So it's going to be everything that happens in Animal House, but with guns. The problem is the movie's only going to be about four or five minutes long because they're all going to be dead by that time. But I don't want to answer that hypothetical because that hypothetical is moronic. This isn't one of the action film or James Bond fantasies running through your head, sir. This is real life. And those kids you mock are really dead. <laughs>